And again, I don't see anything. Oh, hold on. There's something over there. We've got a U-boat off to our left, and we just barely missed that torpedo. Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and in today's video, we are back in Tiny Sailor's World. And today, we are once again back with another episode of Recreating the Disasters. Today, we're focusing on the Carpathia, so yeah guys, let's get into the video. Now, before we get sailing, I'm going to hand it over to Jay Killen to talk about what the Carpathia was, why it was made famous, as well as what it was doing in World War I. So yeah, Jay Killen? Yeah, so the Carpathia was actually a early 1900s passenger liner created by the Cunard Line, uh, in which the Cunard Line was the rival line for the White Star Line. And what's ironic is that she actually saved the survivors from the Titanic after she sank in 1912. And afterwards, when World War I broke out, she was converted to a troop ship that transported Canadian and American expeditionary forces to Europe. And on July 15th in 1918, she departed Liverpool along with a convoy following a zigzag pattern in accordance with procedures against U-boat attacks. And then a few days later, on July 17th, she was actually torpedoed and sunk. So yeah, that's actually what happened to the Carpathia, if you didn't know. You know, I didn't know for the longest time, but yeah, the Carpathia was torpedoed and sank in World War I. But right now, we are waiting for this storm to let up, and also to see if we actually survive the storm, because we're getting battered up against the dock right now, which is probably not doing a lot of wonders for our hull right now, but we'll just ignore that, and uh, we'll wait for daytime, and once again, wait for the storm to go away, and then we'll sail off. We're actually getting completely moved, even though that our anchors are down, which is a little concerning. Now, while I'm getting battered around here, I've got a question for you, Jake Hillen. How many other ships that are more famously known were actually active during World War I? And I don't just mean these battleships and whatnot. I mean, like, proper ocean liners. Yeah, so the Britannic and the Olympic actually participated in World War I, in which, if you didn't know, those two ships were the sister ships of the Titanic, which were a part of the Olympic class. Uh, the Britannic was converted to a hospital ship, and she sank in the Aegean Sea after striking a mine off the coast of Kea. And the Olympic was converted to a troop ship, which was responsible for ferrying Canadian troops and American troops, I believe, along over to Europe to fight in the war. And another very famous one that everyone may know is the sinking of the Lusitania. Similar to the Carpathia, she was uh, torpedoed and sunk. And what's interesting about that is that people actually thought the Britannic was struck by a torpedo, even some of its survivors, but later was found out to be a mine. So, yeah, but here we have the sun just coming over the horizon there, but we've still got a storm, so um, we're going to see how long we can hold out for, but the ship has moved a lot in port. So yeah, we're going to have to do a little bit of maneuvering to get out of this position. You know what, I think I might be able to maneuver out now, so here we go. Alright, so I'm kind of scraping along the dock, but I'm not doing too much damage. And there we go. All right, we are good. Perfect. All right, so the Carpathia has departed port. Definitely not in a very stylish way. We just kind of dragged along the side of the dock there, and our propeller was cutting into the concrete. But other than that, we are now good. So we are going to start making our way towards New York because the Carpathia was actually making its way towards Boston. So they're close enough to each other that uh, we should just go to New York. So yeah, let's go. Now, once we actually leave the port, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that we go in a zigzag pattern, see if we can survive that. Wow, look at that. Right over there, we can actually see a tsunami just passing by, which obviously is something that the Carpathia didn't really experience. And uh, luckily enough, it didn't experience that, or else it probably would have capsized or have been severely damaged. But uh, we are currently continuing on to New York, or, well, we'll pretend it's Boston, but yeah. As we continue this zigzag maneuver, I am still not able to see any U-boats out in the area, so that's good. Here we have some mines, so we're actually going to turn over this way, because we do have a minefield just there to our left. Now, our reduced speed is not going to help us in this situation, because we're going zigzagged, and that's just going to slow us down even more, but we're doing it for safety. I do see another mine just over there, and I think, yeah, we should be good. Oh, there's one just over to our left. And again, I don't see anything. Oh, hold on. There's something over there. We've got a U-boat off to our left, and we just barely missed that torpedo. So they are just off to our left, so we are going to take evasive maneuvers. Really, all we can do is just keep the zigzagging going. And there we go. We've been struck by a torpedo. 
and we are now beginning to take on water. Our water tight doors are closed, so we're going to stop the ingress of water, but I don't know how long we're going to last. We are moving even slower now at 8 knots, and this is not looking good. And we're done. We are now sinking. So the ship is now listing over to the port side. We are taking on quite a bit of water, and right over there is the U-boat that just fired at us. So at this point, some people have already died because of this explosion. So Jay Killen, do you want to talk about that? So the first torpedo that was fired at the Carpathia, it ended up hitting cargo hold number three. And the second torpedo actually hit the engine room and registered her inoperable. And the blast actually killed a few engineers down in the engine room after that. So yeah, there were already fatalities when the torpedoes hit. And the ship was actually stopped in its tracks, like it is now. Now, once the passengers and most of the crew members had left, some of the crew members stayed behind to actually throw some confidential documents overboard. And once they left, the ship was torpedoed for a third time and then finally sank. But currently, she's going down. We've lost the bow, and the water is beginning to flood over the deck with the cargo holds. I'm not sure exactly what deck you would call that. I'm not very fluent with the deck names on the Carpathia, but that deck is now rapidly taking on water. Now, it is turning nighttime, but realistically, it was still daytime, and there's actually a photo that shows the ship going down. But this is really cool because what you've done here, Jay Killen, is you've actually got it in almost like the perfect spots to make it sink like the real ship did. And I think around this point is when that final torpedo struck. So whenever you're ready, you can fire it. Yeah, let me orientate myself. Yep, I don't even know where you are. But uh, the ship is going down and yep, here we go. This is it. So the stern is coming out of the water. This is the end for the Carpathia. I'm going to jump overboard. But yeah, oh my gosh. Um... I think the ship just bounced away from where it was sinking because of the torpedo, but there we go. She's going down by the bow, very realistically as well, to the bottom. Her stern is very clear of the water at this point. She's going vertical, and she's going to slip under the waves in just a moment or two. Her lights have gone out. There's no more power, obviously. I mean, the ship is vertical at this stage, and uh, yeah, this is it. Now, as you can see, the bow is actually really close to the bottom, so it should be striking the bottom very shortly. Now this is really interesting because you can imagine what would happen if the Carpathia sank at night. That would have been even more frightening. There goes a bit of air escaping the cargo holds there. And uh, yeah, she's about to hit bottom. Alright, there she goes. She's just struck bottom. And there she is, lying on the bottom. Very realistically as well because she is upright on the bottom of the ocean. She is sort of broken. She's not broken in two, but she's bent. And her bow is, I think, really embedded in the bottom. But there we go. This is the wreck of the Carpathia, so that is really awesome. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this, make sure to leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you next time, guys. Goodbye.